We need to track vehicles underwater to keep them safe and know the location of observations and discoveries. This video will describe three core systems we use for underwater navigation and how these systems work together. It's pretty technical, so keep a lookout for links throughout the video to learn more. All right, let's go. The first step of underwater navigation is knowing where the ship is at. Because GPS signals cannot penetrate the water, we have to use other technologies to estimate the location of the vehicles. Underwater navigation starts by knowing where Nautilus is on the ocean. Nautilus has antennas that receive signals from the Global Navigation Satellite System to locate the position of the ship. GNSS works by receiving signals from multiple satellites orbiting the Earth. These signals contain the satellite's location and the atomic clock's precise send time. By calculating the time delay sent and received of each signal, a GPS determines its distance from each satellite. Using four or more of these distances, a receiver triangulates its position on the Earth's surface. Okay, so we know precisely where Nautilus is, but what we really want to know is the location of the ROVs relative to the ship. This is where the Ultra Short Baseline, or USBL, navigation system becomes essential. The USBL navigation system uses a ship-mounted transceiver to communicate with beacons on submerged targets, calculating their distance and bearing from the ship. This system works by using sound pulses, or pings, to communicate between the transceiver and the beacons and combining that with the ship's position to calculate the best estimated location of the ROVs on the seafloor. Here it is on Hercules. Both Hercules and Atalanta typically operate in responder mode. In this mode, an electric trigger sent through the tether to the ROVs instructs the beacons to ping. The ROV's beacons ping out a 19 kHz signal, which is received by the ship's transceiver in the main pool. It's as if the ship is asking the ROVs, where are you? And listening to an over here response, similar to an underwater game of Marco Polo. And this is what it looks like in the control room. You can see all the elements we visualize presented on a single screen. The location of the ship with latitude and longitude, the pings being sent to the beacon to the different transponders in the water, and the return and relative location of those transponders. Other details matter in how this location is derived. The speed of sound underwater, distance, and the movement of the vehicles between those pings. The first is the nature of how sound travels underwater. Sound actually travels at slightly different speeds through different temperatures and salinities, potentially distorting our range estimations. We're also quite far away from the beacon in distance. The speed of sound in seawater is roughly 1,500 meters per second. So if the vehicles are at 4,500 meters deep, the USBL can only be checked every three seconds, which tells the navigators where the vehicle was three seconds ago. Not super ideal. Another challenge is that nothing holds still while we're waiting for that response. A motion reference unit is needed to record how the ship is rolling and heaving super precisely, allowing the computers to back calculate the difference between the ship's position, between pinging the ROVs, and their response. As a general rule, the accuracy of a USBL position decreases as the distance between the receiver and the beacons increase. But USBL isn't the only way we keep track of the ROVs. Our navigation is complemented by Doppler Velocity Log Technology, or DVL, which adds another layer of precision. The DVL emits four narrow acoustic beams towards the seafloor and listens for the echo. The difference in frequency between transmitted and received signals at each head shows a Doppler effect, which is used to calculate the velocity. By measuring the velocity of the vehicle over the seafloor, our navigation systems have another way to track the movement of the ROVs. This method provides a very precise but local navigation solution based on dead reckoning. Dead reckoning estimates a vehicle's current position by using a previously determined position or origin and updating it based on the vehicle's speed and direction over time. This method relies on the vehicle's velocity and heading data without using external references or signals. Dead reckoning errors also grow over time, so if you've ever heard our navigators say, reset the DVL, they're waiting for a time where they have a steady USBL position to provide the DVL system with a new origin. DVL can't find where it is in the world unless it's paired with a global solution like USBL. So combining USBL and DVL, a little technology and a lot of math, 
It enables our consistent and reliable tracking of the vehicles and their overall positions on the seafloor. So whew, I know that's a lot, so let's review. We have three core systems used for underwater navigation. GNSS to identify the location of the ship, USBL for the locations of the vehicles, and DVL to increase the precision of that estimate. This multi-system approach allows us to navigate the ROVs with precision, ensuring we can explore efficiently and safely, even in some of the most challenging underwater environments.